This episode of the Towing Life Podcast is sponsored by Strong Arm Recovery. Strong Arm Recovery provides you with a professional towing service that treats your investment like it's their own. With locations in Ottawa, Ontario and Calgary, Alberta, and a full fleet of heavy and light service vehicles, they are guaranteed to meet your towing needs. You can visit strongarm-group.com for more information. Once again, that's strongarm-group.com. Welcome to the Towing Life Podcast, where these two handsome fellas discuss the good, the bad, and the ugly as we see it. I am Towman G. And I am Plane Guy. And this is our show. If you have any subjects or questions you would like covered on the show, you can let us know at thetowinglife at gmail.com or by searching at the Towing Life Podcast on Facebook, your input and experiences are appreciated guys we want to hear from you we need to know you know we've been covering a lot of canada a lot of ontario obviously there's a lot going on there we're going to talk more about it today but anywhere around the world we want to hear the stories from you guys we want to hear what's going on in your state in your province and you know help bring some shed some light on some of those situations so guys today we are going to take a look at rika's new wrecker that they have available the k250r <laughs> I w- uh, what i like it you like it i like it the looks of it uh it's like a pug you either <laughs> like a pug or you don't <laughs> uh, i was hoping to be the first one to say it i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna beat it down we're gonna go by looks first so you know gee we got you know you like it it's like a pug yeah when it comes to looks, I'm going to beat it down before I build it back up. It's it's ugly. It, it's ugly in the non-practical sense of what we think tow trucks are supposed to look like. It, it looks like it's trying to be a mid-duty truck or a heavy-duty truck in a pickup truck 5500 chassis. That's what it looks like. I, th- I thought it really looks like a service vehicle. It's got the high boxes on the side. It's got that you know, uh, service truck look to it with the added boom and wheel lift. Uh, Weight wise, I'd be curious. Um, It looks to be a little heavy. Um, That being said, you know, what they're doing with aluminum and everything else right now, it's hard to say, right? They're, They're managing to cut payloads or, you know, curb weights way down on them to increase payloads. So for the audio listeners, what we're talking about right now, it's a 12 ton wrecker. Rika just came out with on the, they posted a video on towing in Canada on their Facebook page and everything. And they've also got the same wrecker listed on their website. The wrecker on their website doesn't have the high toolboxes that we're talking about that make it look like a service truck. But in the video that they shown, it's got the high toolboxes for lots of storage and then they've got a storage rack underneath the actual wrecker body itself for dollies. And we'll get more into that later, but it's got, it's a 12,000 pound wrecker. It's got stiff legs, uh, twin winches and an 8,000 pound three positions wheel lift, apparently from what they're saying. So I'm hoping we don't have the actual weight specs of this wrecker yet, but I'm hoping uh, it'll do good things if they can keep that curb weight down on the vehicle itself. Well, that's it. And, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of aluminum built into it. Like we were saying, there's a lot of that stuff. Um, Like I said, it looks good. I'd be curious to what it specs out at, weighs out at. You'd have to, you know, see what kind of axle configurations uh, they can include, right? That looks like uh, it's one of them suicide backdoor trucks um, with a decent size wheelbase. That cab to axle wheelbase looks pretty solid. Yeah, um, it's, uh, it's got a full tunnel box, but I think it's actually a tiny bit longer than our standard. Um, oh, no, it's probably about the same. And it doesn't actually have the tunnel box because it's got that boom there. So you don't have any tunnel box by the looks of it. 
But uh, no, though that upper storage, instead of reaching down like you see with the the Vulcans currently, which you know are one of the more popular trucks out there, even their Jordans and the Centuries and all that, they had similar toolboxes. Bending down, getting into your box, trying to find the stuff. This they kind of went box up more at eye level. Be nice to get your chains out of. Um, and then the, what they did is instead of putting the dollies at the eye level and having to lift them off the truck, like you were talking about, they've integrated a low storage. Now, this isn't the first time that I've seen the low storage. I've seen it was some sort of aftermarket system or something they'd put on where they were putting them under the wrecker. Think of an 801. So you are uh, 801, 802. So you really lost that clearance. Where these ones, the bottom of the wrecker is your standard kind of clearance height that you would find with a current Vulcan model. Um, so taking the, the dollies out at a lower height, I think is going to, you know, be nice. And There's a video. The cabinet, you pull two handles and twist them like you would on a, like a normal flatbed cabinet. And instead of it folding all the way down, it only opens a, a 45 degree angle. So you literally slide your dollies in and you slide them out. So for those guys who like to pick them up and carry them on their shoulder, like you're a strong man, you'll have to get used to something else. But for, I'm pretty sure a uh, plain guy here and myself, we carry them down uh, beside our leg once we get them off the truck normally. So it'd be less of a learning curve for us of how to do it. But for some people, it'd be something completely different to learn. When you've well, been doing it for a long time, absolutely. When yeah. you've been, you know, carrying them up over your shoulder, it takes a little bit to get used to. But I think everything on our backs will appreciate it oh yeah practicality on this the amount of uh d-ring locations for snatch blocks is crazy you've got one on each stiff leg you've got uh one above each stiff leg on the flat bar at the back yep. it looks like you even have two more on the wheel lift up tight close to the wrecker you've got your two standard on your boom below the shift head and then you've got two more i'm not sure how strong those ones are back by your uh, hydraulic cylinders as well and that's just from what i can see here in one picture <laughs> yeah yeah i know this thing looks like it is equipped for recovery uh we talked it's got the two the the twin uh stiff legs on it so you know dual stiff legs obviously this thing isn't built to tow your just your smart cars um it is meant to do some recovery it looks like it might even be on a four-wheel drive chassis on this setup i'd be uh, i'd be curious to try that unit you know what I've never been a big fan of the Rika. They've come a long way. When I first seen them, I remember I wasn't a big fan of them. Um, you know, they have a lot of uh, NRC-like tendencies to them. Um, overall, though, honestly, I think they're doing good things. We've been waiting to see a new wrecker out of somebody, right? The Renegade was kind of the new concept that came out. Everyone... I don't know if everyone, because if everyone was begging, well, they would have made them by now. But I know a lot of people would be interested to see what a company like NRC could do with a light duty wrecker, um, especially, you know, what they do with their, their rotators and their everything and their flatbeds. They're phenomenal. So, um, you know, Rika has got a lot of their principles in mind and uh, I'm, I'm kind of curious to check it out. I'm sure with Tosho is coming back, hopefully soon. We'll be able to see this thing in, you know, up close, up personal. I want to, I want to try lifting those dollies. Yeah. I want to try using them and see how much, you know, see how better it actually is on the back and everything else else. I want to get your opinion on something. I've never ran a truck with the scoops with the actual fork bracket built onto them, like the wheel grids. Have you ever ran a truck like that? You mean, so the sliders that go onto each end of the wheel lift, they not only have the spot for the spoon, but there's also a welded plate normally in front of the T-bar that you can drop a fork into? Yeah, it's on the inside of the uh, wheel grid, right? So it's yeah. the closest. Yeah. The, the only problem with a lot of those I could see you running into is in order to get your forks in the width that they need to be, your grids would have to slide out farther. Yeah. I'm not worried about the integrity of everything of the grids, but what I'd be worried about is depending on like, you can't grab an axle yeah, because your, your wheel grids would be hitting the tires. If you're trying to grab a front axle on something. So I, I see that setup. Um, I've seen it on a lot more understyle bumper trucks yep. and it tends to be normally used on hitches only is what you really see them hooking mm -hmm. onto. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I think it's got its uses for that, but practicality wise for an all around truck, uh, I don't see it as being uh, too practical, honestly. One I've never ran one, though. To answer the question, I've never actually ran one. <laughs> one of the first modifications someone's going to do to this is stick a set of Vulcan sliders on there. Guaranteed, oh, yeah. run the strap. Uh, 
<laughs> it doesn't matter what kind of what kind of wheel lift you have. The first thing people do is throw the sliders out and get them some Vulcan strapless uh, yeah. because they think that they don't have to run chains or anything too. They think they're strapless and chainless. Well, you need your safety chains, technically. <laughs> so <laughs> by, by law, uh, right? No, by law, you, you need chains. And we talked about Wreckmaster last week. Uh, it talks or two weeks ago, it talks a lot about, you know, what are your, how are your chains crossed and independent from the primary? Yeah. That has always been the answer. How do you run your safety chains crossed and independent from the primary? Another thing I want to touch, I'm not sure if we said it or not, but it comes standard with 12,000 pound winches, two of them, yeah. which for a 12 ton racker, you're doing pretty good there. But with most 12 tons that I've seen, anything that has the stiff legs on the back on this chassis, just re re reiterating the point <laughs> stumbling over my words great for recoveries but thinking you got a twelve thousand pound uh racker and you're going to tow those box trucks and other 5500s and whatnot you really got to be watching that weight just because yeah. you got a lot of racker there that you got to account for yeah well that's why and i'd like to see like i said and hopefully maybe rika if anyone from there is watching and or listening, you can send us over the spec sheet. What are the curb weights on these things? What are your, you know, what are your front axle weigh? What are your back axle weigh? Give us some dimensions. Let us run some numbers on it. Obviously, you guys have some very smart engineers there, and I'm sure they have done a lot of this research, and they can tell you exactly what your towing capacity is. But um, I'm kind of curious. <laughs> I know I a lot of guys that online. love the Rika beds, and they love them. They absolutely love them. Rika and NRC, very similar companies, very similar products. NRC has been out longer, but I know a lot of guys who like Rika also like NRC. And uh, both companies make some very good products. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so with that, G, <laughs> I think we can move on. We've got some interesting news. Again, we talked about it. We do talk a lot of Ontario. We talk a lot of Canadian uh, towing news. Um, this one is coming out of Ontario. This, this is a doozy. This is a doozy and, you know, full disclaimer, everything you're going to hear, I have pulled directly from the bill, um, which has been released. Um, it is a it bill, is, so you know where we're going. I hope. <laughs> it has received royal assent July 1st, 2021. Uh, full disclaimer, though, I've done the best research I can through reading through the bill. Um, we're going to give you guys the information on it the best that we can. Uh, I encourage everyone, the link for this bill will be in the description of the video. This isn't a link to an article with our opinion on it. This is literally the link to the bill from the e-laws, from the Ontario government. You guys can read through it all. You can find what, what we're talking about and, and give any input you might have on it. We don't know what's coming. No one does. We're just going to go over what it states so far. Absolutely. Um, so the bill is Bill 282, the Moving Ontarians More Safely Act of 2021. Uh, Schedule 3 of that bill is what goes into depth on Towing and Storage Safety and Enforcement Act 2021. Uh, as I said earlier, the bill received royal assent on July 1st, 2021. There seems to be no date yet that they have for it set to come into effect. So everything... That sounds like is that the it is coming. It is a matter of when and how they're um, going to implement it all and how they're going to implement, how they're going to enforce it. There was mentions in the bill of the, uh, you know, there's going to be a full I want I wish I, I can have it open in a second, um, but about like a director of towing for Ontario, somebody that's going to oversee this in charge of enforcement, in charge of certif certification um everything the so government will definitely go for that they like uh making themselves make bigger. work make work projects <laughs> yeah make work projects make work projects this is part of what we talked about right where you know you hate to hear at times and it scares you i'm from the government and i'm here to help yeah well this is our first look at what the government is going to do to help and uh take it how you will help. uh <laughs> so um in one of the sections of the bill no person shall accept under the authority of a tow certificate and in accordance with this act and the regulations a provider or offer to provide towing services or b hold themselves out as a tow operator um i'm going to read the second one before we go into it because then it goes down to tow truck drivers that was tow operators uh 
section three on it no person no person shall accept under the authority of a tow driver's certificate and in accordance with this act and regulation a drive a tow truck to provide towing services or b hold themselves out as a tow truck driver so what that sounds like is coming to ontario is tow licenses and this sounds province-wide this is not just a um we don't know what it is i shouldn't say this isn't one thing we don't know what it is is this going to be a written test like an endorsement on a license for an air brake is this going to be a two-day weekend course similar to you know your motorcycle license um with training similar to what the roadsides are offering similar to what um rec master is offering we don't know what we do know is there is some sort of certificate coming that you will need to have and hold in order to operate and drive a tow truck that's what big because ontario has never had anything like that so what's confusing me a little bit here is we have the two sections one's for tow truck operators or tow operators using their exact words tow operators yep. and the other one's for tow truck drivers so mm. is there going to be two classes to this I mean, there should be with different exceptions. (laughs) Like, am I going to be called a driver because I only do light and medium duty and the operators are going to be the heavy guys because that's going to be a pissing contest online. (laughs) I honestly, uh, I believe G that what they're referring to is like tow truck operators be operate like owners that operate a towing company Uh, and the tow truck driver is actually the driver that mm -hmm. that would be my, my first interpretation of that. Yep. Um, is operators yeah companies operating a towing business they will need some sort of certificate and the drivers as well will need something yeah that makes sense it 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 makes sense um i'm all for mandatory training in the industry or some sort of evaluation are you a tow truck operator looking for a great company to grow with are you currently living in canada well strong arm recovery wants to hear from you with a large modern fleet and competitive wages strong arm recovery is changing the way tow truck operators are taken care of. With national expansion on the rise, they are actively searching for franchisees across the country. There is also current openings in both their Ottawa, Ontario, and Calgary, Alberta locations for operators. Please visit strongarm-group.com for more information and how to apply. Um, I've been a big believer and honestly, you know, there was a state, and I would have to look it up. It was one of the... I want to say it was Virginia, somewhere along those lines, they had a, a written test that you went into, you know, what we would call the MTO service Ontario, and you would write this test and you would have to, you know, it was 50 some questions, whatever it was. And you would have to, you know, achieve a passing grade on that to go work for a towing company. I'm all for that. You know, even as a base level, that is a great start. My fear though, and I think this would be the fear for a lot of owners um, is that, you know, what's it going to cost? We have a very small hiring pool now. As, as anyone that will tell you in this industry, it is very hard to find operators. We're looking and for once, operators currently. Yeah, everybody is. Everybody is. And because either you find them, they stay for a, sh- a short time. Um, and it's not for them. Um, you know, it's always been a high turnover rate industry. Now, you're going to have to add cost, more cost onto that. So instead of just sticking your best operator in a truck with a rookie for two weeks and showing them the ropes, you can do that. But then he's still got to go and $500 for a weekend training course, $1,000, whatever it is. Do you have to do that before or after? Is it anything like a G1 license where as long as you have someone who holds a license in that truck can train someone? I would be very interested to see, to see if you go and get that license if there's a step above that to where you can become a trainer for that company you work for and have to go for a separate course or something like that i'm sure we'll see something implemented like that down the road if there is a course that you got to do and it's not just a written test i believe i honestly believe if it's a course you're going to see companies like rec master companies like roadsides that are already doing their their training programs um you know branching out and offering that services you know teaming up with the government uh i don't think your idea of train the trainer or whatever you know 
Mm -hmm. it, it used to be called similar to that. I honestly don't think the government, if they're employing this across the province like this, I don't think your train the trainer concept will come in. Mm -hmm. um, but I do like your idea of, like I said, with the G1 license, where you have to, you know, you're allowed to drive as long as you have somebody with you that has had maybe their certificate or, or they have over their three years. That's what we always talk about in Ontario. Uh, insurance companies want over three years experience before they'll let a, somebody drive. Um, so, you know, that might make sense. Uh, that might make sense. I'd like to see it again. That's, that's, what's going to be the big decider is cost and, uh, you know, availability too. When are these courses going to be available? Where are they going to be available? And I think that's why we're seeing the, the date set. You know, I don't think they've got all their ducks in a row yet. They know there's going to be a, a, an industry-wide or province-wide standard test that it has to be completed. I don't think they know how they're going to offer it quite yet or how they're going to manage it. And, you know, possibly they might know, but we don't know at this point. So moving on, we got a lot of things to cover in this. Uh, <laughs> employment engagement of tow truck drivers. Section two of that, no tow certificate holder shall employ or engage a person as a tow truck driver unless the person is the holder of a valid tow driver's certificate. And also the restriction on provision of the towing services at a collision. Mm -hmm. uh, 31 section one, no tow driver's certificate holder shall provide or offer to provide towing services or park or stop a tow truck on a highway within 200 meters of A, a scene of a collision or apparent collision or B, a motor vehicle involved in a collision. So I'm pretty sure we already have something like that in like some bylaws where you can't stop a tow truck and solicit your services unless you're called there. But I think this is going to come more in depth and this might actually overwrite the Highway Traffic Act because I'm pretty sure that's where it is originally. Well, I'm wondering if they're going to make amendments to the, the if this is going to amend the Highway Traffic Act. Um, so what it is is, yeah, you're right. A lot of uh cities have their own bylaws that say you can't stop on a road highway driveway you know they go they cover everything within 200 meters of an accident um the highway traffic act would read it along the lines of you can't stop within 200 meters of an accident on a or you cannot stop on a king's highway i believe it was or queen's highway we had this discussion <laughs> within 200 meters of an apparent accident and there was exceptions in there if there was already, an, you know, sufficient tow trucks for vehicles involved, um, meaning if it was a two car accident and two trucks were there, you were to roll away. This has now changed. This is nobody can stop within 200 meters. It doesn't matter what highway it's on. It's on a highway. And they, it seems to have lost the, you know, unless there is a need for a tow truck, meaning there's two cars and no trucks on scene. This sounds like we know that the first available system is coming to an end in Toronto. They are launching pilot projects that will have exclusive towing zones. This sounds like that first available system is getting capped all over the province. Um, because, you know, now that being said, it also says, unless you are called by an officer. So the first available system, I guess, could still be available in the sense, uh, for anyone that doesn't know, the first available system um, was introduced in Toronto a long time ago um, in the GTA. And where it was is, is police would come over the radio and, and dispatch the first available tow truck to a location to tow a vehicle. There is a lot of opinions on the first available system and the people that work within it. I tend to keep try and keep as neutral of an opinion as I can. You can't fault uh, the people for playing the game they were presented. Absolutely. So the, the police will dispatch first available tow, meaning the first tow truck that gets up will hook the vehicle. The flaw to this system has been it has increased in, you know, stunt driving incidents, drivers driving recklessly, all of that because they want to be the first one there. Because if they are the first one there, they get paid. Now, a lot of people shine negative light and say, you know, all kinds of stuff about chasers, vultures. They'll call them every name in the book. And I will be the first to admit that years ago, a couple years ago, I was one of them people. The reality is, guys, the government came out with a system and said, we are going to operate with this first available system. Those tow truck operators, they didn't create this system. They're working within it. As you said, G, they are taking advantage of a system that was put in place in front of them. They're not even taking advantage of it. 
They're not. The I problem honestly is, is the... don't think they're taking advantage. Are they taking it too far on a personal individual level? Yes. Yes. I've seen a lot of those guys running so like reddish amber lights where they are pretty much red and putting white lights beside them to make people think that they might be a fire truck or something like that. Yeah. Or I've seen them run red lights, but everyone, I, I doesn't matter if you're a tow truck or just a, driving in a civilian vehicle, people run red lights. I've, I've seen, you know, roadside all, stickered up trucks running red lights too. Yeah. Um, it, you know, it is the case, you know, a, a few give a bad name to the many, um but you know the deal is is the government launched the program they consulted with the tow operators they thought it was the best of the time and back then it probably was I, I believe first available was a a practical and viable solution at the time i think times have changed i think the introduction of this bill is showing that um i have big hopes that ontario is moving in the right direction by you know eliminating the first available system if that's what this means i'm not saying that's what this means that's how i read it that's how i interpret it the problem we have guys we've ran into this in the towing industry a million times it's you know it's an officer's interpretation of the law and and everyone will interpret it a little differently that's why i suggest you head to the link you read it yourself i do like this idea though of bringing in a province-wide law so instead of worrying about the bylaw and you come out of the GTA, you go down the highway a little bit further. What's the bylaws there, right? You don't know. So yep. as, as long as it's this one big umbrella, you know you're going to be following the same law as you are 200 kilometers away from where you just picked up that car, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. So that will be easier. And it's a lot you read and understand and learn this law. You got it in the back of your mind. And then if someone says, hey, I don't think you're doing this right, as long as you know the law and you can say, state, like, well, this is what this code is under this subsection, and you can cover your ass easier. That's what, that's what it is, right? It's about covering our asses, guys. You know, we get taught that a lot. Roadside companies teach that a lot, um, you know, and, you know, even you small-time operators that are out there, you smaller mom-and-pop operations, cover your ass at all times. And, and knowing the law and being up to date on this information. I'm really surprised. I reached out to quite a few operators about this information, and even a couple owners, and asked them if they knew anything about this bill. And the answer was no. They'd never heard it. they had never heard of it. And, and that's, that's scary. A bill that's received towing uh, royal assent and is now, you know, waiting to be enforced at one point. Could be January 1, could be July 1 next year. I'm sure there'll be an announcement ahead of time. But the bill's gone past the point of debate. It's received royal assent and nobody knows about it, right? And it, it kind of begs the, the question, why? How? Why is right? no one talking about it? What's so why? bad about it that people are trying to cover it up? I don't know if they're trying to cover it up or I don't know if we just don't have proper representation in the industry. And, and I'm not taking a job at anyone specifically, but we have groups that are you know, were involved with talks with the government. I think a lot of them, I think the government broke off on a lot of them. And I, I don't blame the folks putting the hard work at these associations. But at the same time, if you want what's best for the industry, if this was information that was passed along within an association, which I agree with, you know, pass it on to your members, but it should also be passed on to the whole industry if you're looking to represent the whole industry. Yeah. And, and I kind of wonder if that's what happened here. Knowledge is key. If we can, if we're all informed and on the same page, we can do a lot more than just the select handful of people that know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. And so, you know, join your associations, right? There is multiples out there. That is another problem we have here in Ontario. There is multiple associations out there. Um, but, you know, we got to join. We've got to come together. You know, information is key. I think every company should know about this. Talk to your local MPs too. Maybe they could help shred, shed some light, see what uh, they're going to implement. Talk to the other tow companies in your town, put your uh, petty whatever aside and just come together because we're all in the same industry at the end of the day. We all eat off this table to feed our families and everything. We're all in this together. This is something that can change for everyone, not just Joe Blow and Bob's towing blue truck over there, right? Like it's... Province Bob's block. garage. Are, are you throwing out shit's Creek's references on me? G <laughs> Bob's well, garage. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the other thing that's coming in on this bill, this is a big bill. There's a lot to go over and we are just literally guys, we are skimming 
the top of it. We we went through it. We grabbed a couple of key points we wanted to talk about. You know, we'd be here um, for hours if we went in depth. I don't think anybody wants to listen to G or myself just sit here and monotonely read the well, entire bill. Apparently, I do have a soothing voice. So I would put everyone to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you have a something my man you have a something i know um, not looks <laughs> um so another part of the section we found is in, in 25 um it's under restrictions on passengers and tow trucks and it says no tow driver certificate holder shall allow a person to travel as a passenger in a tow truck except a if the person is traveling as a passenger for the purpose of assisting the tow truck driver in carrying out towing services, so a helper of sorts is what it sounds like, or as permitted by and in accordance with the regulations. So I'm not sure if there's going to be an amendment to that to include while the operator is, is transporting a vehicle, he is allowed to take the owner of said vehicle. Um, but everything this reads right off the hop is we're not taking passengers now you call a cab and a cab shows up he's got that permit to take passengers and they have the whole infrastructure in place we're tow trucks we're tow truck drivers tow truck operators we're designed and not designed we're not designed we're all human but our goal and job is to pick up a car and relocate it you start picking or i think what this is meaning you know uh, I think it's with a G1 license. You can't drive with passengers in your vehicle between a certain time because you'll egg each other on, right? right? I'm also thinking where, okay, if you've got a truck with three buddies in it and you all show up to tow a vehicle and you show up to a little old lady on the side of the road and three big guys get out of the truck, you can intimidate them. That's okay, quick question. Do. How many times is that happening? Hello? If anyone has ever seen a tow truck show up with three big dudes getting out of that tow truck, I want to see it. I've seen, I've had vehicles picked up from my impound lot and there's been four guys in a tow truck picking up a car and well, three of I've, them were working. Well, <laughs> I've never seen more than one person and possibly a wife along for the ride or something in a tow truck. Yeah. But no, this sounds, uh, I worry for the customer side of things. I think it might be, um, it could be the elimination. Like we said, you, you know, we are in the business of transporting vehicles, right? That's, you know, to, to build on your point, not people. Um, it's unfortunate and it, it's kind of built into our nat our nature and we want to help people out. Um, but that being said, cost of equipment has gone up because, you know, we've been required to buy extended cab tow trucks because extended cab tow trucks, because you need to take all those passengers that your roadside contracts, uh, you know, and not even that just, private calls require and you know i wonder if that's going to start to cut in on this meaning if they come out and say there's no passengers you're not licensed like a, a, a cab like a bus uh we don't carry any of those permits i could see in an emergency situation to move off the highway to the next safest location that's always normally a a hidden part in the regulations to help out but past that i mean if they're at their house and they're going to the dealership you know covid has already had an effect on this um, I kind of wonder if, you know, we are looking at the future of no passengers, which as, it, as it, an operator, I kind of, I kind of like the idea. <laughs> it's good and bad in a way. I don't know about you, but if I was taking passengers and we got a chit chat and on the tow, I normally ended up with more tips when I was taking passengers than otherwise, right? You get to know the person, interact a little bit, make their day better, hopefully make them laugh, right? You make a more long lasting impression because, you know, when we're picking up a vehicles, we want to be get there loaded in and out under 10 minutes, right? If you get a sling dollies, maybe a little bit longer, double pick something, whatever. It takes so, you more than 10 minutes with dollies. I'm sorry. I didn't train you. Well. It takes you more than 10 minutes to hook up. If you have to throw dollies, I didn't train you very well. well I'm talking about the whole time you get there, you greet the person that you're picking it up, get the keys blah 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 you, you mean we're not supposed story. to just we're not supposed to just walk up and say hey give me your keys i'm here to tell your fucking car and walk away we're supposed to have a conversation with them well be polite you know i guess you don't get too many tips do you just being a right asshole everywhere you go uh but no 
I'm all for the idea if we can pick our passengers. <laughs> yeah, like you know how some people or some roadsides provide our picture. Let me see the picture of what they look like. Give me their age, where they live, and also what they smell like on that day, please. I'd I'd settle for just what they smell like to know like what they smell like that day. Yeah. I don't really care what they look like. I don't care where they live. I don't care any of that stuff. I just want to know if I'm going to have to roll with my windows down for the next two hours after my tail. We've all had those passengers that have come with us. Or you pick that drunk guy up from the bar and he's called a tow truck. He's at least not driving. So kudos <laughs> to him, but he throws up in your truck. <laughs> and I don't know you, if I've ever you, had, I've never had somebody throw my truck. No, I've had someone no. throw up out the window, which sucked because it hit that dually plate. <laughs> oh, the flat bar. Oh, that splattered everywhere. <laughs> and like you want to charge the guy a cleanup fee but like so absolutely do we have the right to again <laughs> taxis know. can yeah taxis can but i mean we'd eliminate that problem if we didn't have to take passengers we would pros and cons you gotta weigh them eh, no it's true you know what like i said i would uh i would take customer choice um you know just giving us the choice because I've met some amazing people. You're right. You have some great conversations. I've, you know, some great stories with people I've met on the road, um, you know, because they were broken down. I towed them somewhere. Um, I've had customers where I kid you not, I towed it five and a half hours away. Um, they requested me because I towed them off the highway. Originally, they'd gone home. And once I got up there, I would have been sitting in GTA traffic to get back. They said, what's the rush? We, I had dinner with, uh, I had brought a friend with me on the ride. We had dinner with the husband and wife and their kids. Nice steak dinner, nice salad. He barbecued um, because we would have been sitting in traffic anyways. And we hadn't eaten yet. The That's stories awesome. of those people that you meet yeah. go away with that no passenger. Yeah, I picked up a car in my one town here at my last company. And they're like, oh, they said you couldn't take four passengers. So we're calling a cab and it's going to be like $400 to guess where we're going. I was like, you know what? I don't live that far away. Let me go drop off some extra gear. I'll pick your car up. I'll get you put in the truck and we'll hammer down because you're late for a wedding or a funeral or something it was. And I got them down to their hotel. I dropped them all off. They gave me like a $75 tip and I towed their car around the corner to the dealership. And they were so thankful. They left me a good review and everything. And I told them, I was like, it's either you wait for your cab and I have to wait, or you wait for 20 minutes for me to run home and come back and get you picked up. And they're like, oh, that's great. And that's the type of stuff that you'll, you won't get if we're not physically, legally not allowed to take passengers. Now, that being said, um, you know, I, it, I have been back for a couple months now, right? I took about a year hiatus. I've been back for a couple months. I have yet to take a passenger in that couple months. I've not taken one. I've taken uh, a few. A hand I, I, and that's why I want to I ask anyone listening or watching at the same time. Where are you guys at for customers? Right? I have not taken one. I refuse to take one. Um, I'm not going to get into the politics of anything. I will give you my simple and very easy explanation. In the province that I am in, if I were to test positive, vaccinated or unvaccinated, and I don't care if you agree or disagree with either, that's not the point. I need to quarantine for 14 days. Doesn't matter. You know, if you test positive, you quarantine for 14 days. So I have said that I will gladly take passengers when one of two things happens. I no longer have to quarantine if I test positive or somebody is going to pay me my time off while I quarantine. Hmm. Because at the end of the day, I'm, you know, it's, I look at it from a financial standpoint. If I have to take two weeks off, regardless how I feel, regardless how sick I get, you know, that's, that's all political debate that doesn't belong on this fucking show. But if I've got to take two weeks off because I were to ride with a passenger who happened to be positive, who happened to transmit it, regardless if I feel fine, I have to, you know, who's paying me? I'm pretty sure you who, can get something through the government for that. Yeah. Delayed and everything else, guys, you know, the, you, you know how that works, you know, but at the same time, so if I'm going to catch it and I'm going to have to quarantine for the 14 days and take the time off, it is going to be on something that I did on my own stupidity. If I'm going to lose my working wage, it is not going to be because I was forced into taking a passenger. Now that is my opinion. I want to hear from the people out there that are listening. Are you taking passengers? Will you take passengers? What's your, what's your views on it? I don't care about vaccines. I don't care about any of that shit. 
I just want to know, are you taking passengers? Are you not taking passengers? And what it would take for you to take them if you aren't. Gee, I want your opinion on it as well. So we're about, what, three hours apart from each other? I yeah, think. give or take. Yeah, so I'm technically classified as the GTA. Plane guy isn't. We take people, if they break down on the highway, we will pick up their car. And technically, we have to, through some roadsides, we have to take the person who has the roadside purchased in their name with the vehicle to the closest uh, carpool lot, closest exit to the highway. There's more than one person in the vehicle, as long as they can fit in the tow truck. That is what we agreed upon with some roadsides, just so we can get them up and off the highway. Everyone has to wear a mask. Even I have to wear a mask while I'm driving, but I have other people in the truck with me, so it is what it is. And once we get it to that uh, location, the safe location, so it's not on the highway, get clear the highway, we wait for the cab or an Uber or whatever, friend, family. The reason being is one less vehicle pulled over on the shoulder of the road, less confusion on the side of the highway, right? Get it clear, get it off. Am I okay with that? Not really. Do I do it? I, I kind of have to. I know I have a choice at the end of the day, but it's got to get done. And that comes down to people giving a fuck and the shit's got to get done. I had, uh, when this whole thing started, it was a pickup truck going 200 kilometers. It was a cash paying customer, family of four coming back from their vacation. I was like, you know what? There's no sense of trying to make you guys pay for a cab. And if I make you pay for a cab, you'll probably just find another tow company that will take you with them. And I lose out on the, whatever the tow bill was. So I took them with me and they gave me a tip and they were very polite and thankful. So I think it comes back to your point originally is you pick your passengers. I don't want to arrive on scene knowing I have to take this person. If I get there and it's a 70 year old man and I've met 20 people in that day already that I don't know, I might have something. I don't want to pass it on to him. Right. I don't, I don't, I'm going to cut you off on that one. The reason I say that is picking your passengers is discriminating regardless yeah. of what reason you're doing it. And I'm not saying you have a bad reason for doing it. Right. Yeah. But like you said, the seven year old man where you've seen 20 people that day, you're more worried about his health yeah. um, than your own, but you're discriminating on it by a clear cut policy of I'm not taking passengers. And I'm sorry, that's just the world that we live in at this point. Yep. Then, you know what? We'll start, you know, cab companies will flourish. <laughs> They'll start responding just as fast as tow trucks are. Yep. Hell, we'll even give them orange flashy lights if they'd like. Hey, make sure they turn them off while they're driving down the road. <laughs> Why? We can't get tow operators to do it at this point. <laughs> oh, shots get fired. Shots fired. Uh, I'm wired up to your running lights and your PTO. Just driving yeah. down the highway, your PTO on, got your beacon lights going. Oh man, uh, that's a regional thing too. We will get into it a different time because we've got a deep dive into the regulations and laws on that one to really go into depth on it. <laughs> um, so as we talked about, guys, today there is some mandatory driver certification coming. We don't know what it is. We're hoping to see it. Um, we're unsure at what level at this point it's going to be. Is it going to be, you know, a written test? Is it going to be a training course? We don't know. Is it going to turn out good, bad, or, or ugly for the whole <laughs> We don't know. Yet. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We've thrown it right in the middle because we don't know what section it's actually going to fall under. Um, you know, and worried about thinning out the already thin driver pool that we have in the towing industry. Uh, Rika's got a new wrecker out, guys. Be sure to go take a look at it. Give us your opinion on it. The K250R. It looks pretty sweet. Um, I want to know what we, what you guys are doing for passengers. Send us an email at the towing life at gmail.com. Search for us on Facebook at the towing life. Send us a message through the page. I really want to hear what everyone's doing for that. Or even easier than that comment section down below on our YouTube videos. Absolutely. So guys, if you have any subjects and questions like that, I want to hear your answers. Anything else you guys would love to contribute, whether it be, uh, you know, questions, topic you'd like to see covered. Um, ask G when he's going to learn how to shave that face of his. By all means, you can email us at the towing life at gmail.com, like I said, or find us on Facebook at the towing life. Send us a message there. 
The Towing Life podcast wouldn't be possible without the help of our amazing sponsors. With heavy and light service vehicles in both Ottawa, Ontario and Calgary, Alberta, Strong Arm Recovery has all your needs covered. Franchises available across Canada. So support those that support your favorite podcast and visit them at strongarm-group.com. On behalf of myself, Plain Guy, and my main man G over here, I want to thank you guys all for coming out, listening, watching, sharing everything. This has been a great time. I cannot, gee, I can't speak for you, but I can't wait to see us on the next one. Oh, yeah. I think it's going to be on like 20 months for us, but it'll be a week for you guys. (laughs) (laughs) Take care. See you later.